So now you see my camera. Yes. And somebody can keep checking on the waiting room because I'm looking at it. It's come, can you still see the participants? And you can bring yes. them in if they come in. Okay. So this is uh, this is my old camera, which is a Nikon D7100. <clears throat> it's the camera body itself is about a thousand dollars, and then the zoom 200 to 400 zoom lens is another couple thousand, and then it's got a 1.7 Nikon teleconverter for 180 bucks, and the tripod is another almost 300. So basically, this one setup is about 3,500 dollars. And that's what I used when I first started um, photographing birds. Um, this is a photo of this mount that you can mount on your window. So if you're um, driving around the auto tour loop or anywhere else for that matter. Something like uh, that. It's, uh, yeah, it works really well for, um, especially for national wildlife refuges um, <laughs> because you don't have to, uh, it swivels in all different directions. And uh, it's very handy. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's about 260 bucks. And the place that you can get it is ru.com, R-U-E.com. Just thought I'd put that out there because that really saved me when I was using that big camera. Now I have, the Sony RX10 IV, which is, well, that big camera was over 16 pounds with the camera and the and this tripod and everything. This uh, Sony RX10 IV is a, two, a 24 to 600 millimeter zoom, uh, costs $1,700 and it weighs less than two and a half pounds. So this is primarily the bird, the, 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 uh, camera that I use for almost everything now, except, you know, if I'm in a stationary place and I can use a tripod. So with that, and I can give you more information okay. on that later, if you want. This is, uh, this is what it looks like when you're wielding that camera. This is when I was in Costa Rica and, uh, shooting uh, hummingbirds. Um, so I decided what to do the way to do this was I was going to start from the beginning of Sibley's guidebook and go through and picture most of the birds that I've uh, photographed in that order so that might help you if you're not familiar with uh, bird guidebooks um, but it starts with loons and this is a uh, common loon and breeding plumage, which I only saw once in my life, and it was over at Humboldt. As a matter of fact, I think Chet Hogan was with me, and uh, I haven't seen one in, in breeding plumage since. And um, this is an eared grebe in breeding plumage, which um, if you paid uh, uh, tr attention to Dan Greeney's um, blogs on the Wintu Audubon, you would know that eared grebes um, are flightless for something like nine to 10 months out of the year until they're in breeding plumage like this. So this one this one can fly, but when you're going to, to uh, photograph eared grebes and they're not in breeding plumage like this, they can't fly, which is a, a really good advantage for photographers. So whenever I go up to Fall River, I mean, I. Uh, that's that's the only time I've ever seen a, a an aired grebe in in breeding plumage, and that was over on the coast or down in the Bay Area. So it makes it really easy to get good shots of eared grebes because they can't really fly and take off. This is a horned grebe, and you can tell the difference because the uh, black doesn't go below the eye like it does. On the on the eared grebe. This is a at a Manzanilla Lake. It's a pie-billed grebe with the offspring. It looks like she's got six, maybe seven, little chicks there. 
This is uh, a Western grebe feeding the young at Clear Lake. Looks like the, the looks like the youngster is bigger than the adult. And this is a Clark's grebe. See, and you can see the difference between Clark's grebes and the Western grebe. The Clark Clark's grebe um, has the uh, orange bill and the black above the eye. And you can see the Western grebe, the black goes below the eye and it has kind of a green bill. Um, and there are, they do crossbreed. So these are, this is uh, a photo from Floyd Hayes who took me out when he was, uh, he's a zoologist specializing in ecology, behavior and bio geography of birds. He's a professor of biology at uh, Pacific Union College. And he studied the grebe population at Clear Lake from 2010 to 2019. I was lucky enough to go with him out on the lake um, when they were counting the, were doing the grebe count. And so uh, this is uh, a Western grebe on top of a Clark's grebe. And that's where you get the cross breeds uh, that we see sometimes. And this next shot is, according to Floyd, uh, what you see if you get too close to one of their nests, they don't like that too much. Luckily, while we were there, um, Floyd yelled out, parasitic Jaeger. So this is at, at Clear Creek, I mean at Clear Lake, and and he sees this para parasitic Jaeger, which I've, I had never seen one before. It's still the only one I've ever seen because they are um, an ocean um, species, basically. So that was pretty exciting. That was a, a lifer for me, obviously. This is a, just a squadron of pelicans, what, American white pelicans coming over the Sacramento River. Pretty, pretty picture. Yeah, oh. and this is, this is uh, uh, another group of American white pelicans on the Sacramento River in a, in a local place um, at the corner of the uh, of the wastewater treatment plant where where if it if it's not raging river like it is now and there's some um, land and rocks sticking up they uh, a lot of times uh, gather there and these are obviously in breeding plumage because you can see the the uh, epidermal plates on the Things on their bills yeah on the top of their bills. Reading, and there's a, it's a double crested cormorant, a couple of them in the back there, and some kind of a duck looks like it's diving back there too. This is the brown pelican. Um, these uh, uh, are photos that I took from uh, over on the coast at Arcata Marsh. Lots of them over on the coast. Um, by the way, you see that some of these have. Um, watermarks on them. This is a wildlife conservation stamp. That's a, a group that I was that we were trying to get going to help um, to help facilitate uh, wildlife refuges um, like the duck stamp does, but um, we never got a, off the ground even after five or six years, so we, we had to kind of give it up. Then I went to the uh, International Bird Rescue mm. Um, and watch them do some uh, work on the uh, brown pelicans over in the bay. This is where they're measuring their length of the beak of the bill. Okay. And uh, this one on the left is where they're they're banding they're banding the pelican. And then I got to release it while I was there, which which was great. I got some photos of that flying away, but figured I didn't need to show you that. Double crested cormorant in the their drying position. You know, this is how they dry off after being wet most of the time. By the way, I'm I'm just um, uh, showing slides that are of of birds that are available in the in the U.S. Um, and but this is a, a female in Hinga that I actually photographed in Costa Rica, but they can also be found in the southeast uh, of the United States around the Gulf Coast. This is a female. Coloration on the wing. Yeah. 
American Bitter, uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. I have a friend that says he sees, every time he goes there, he sees American Bitter. And so I, have, I think I've seen him maybe twice or three times, all many times as I've been there. The Great Blue Heron at Mary Lake. This is a, I think this is a juvenile or a young adult. Um, he was very irritated, he or she is, was very irritated as I took several photographs of him as he, and he kept missing and missing and I don't think he ever got a fish. He was pretty upset. I like this uh, photograph a lot because it gets uh, the, all the egrets oh in gosh. one. Look at all the egrets in one photo. We got the great um, egret, great egret in the back and the snowy egret and then the cattle egret in the front. Huh. And uh, there was there was so many egrets in this uh, area. Actually, I did a, a video on it that you can see on my YouTube channel. I think I even put it on the Wintu YouTube channel. And the uh, black birds that you see in our um, white-faced ibis. And here's a, another photograph of a snowy, Green. all fluffed, all fluffed out. I showed Larry that my egret. Oh. <laughs> um, this is a tricolored heron that I've actually photographed in Costa Rica, but you can find them in Florida and all along the eastern seaboard. Pretty color. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty mm -hmm. color. And I've got a few photos of a little blue heron. Uh, this is the little blue, blue heron. Uh, these I all shot these in Costa Rica, but they're also in the southeastern United States. The uh, I kind of like the the coloring there. This is another adult, and I don't know if you guys know what this is. Anybody know what this is? A white heron. It's a little blue heron, white. Yeah, this is a juvenile little blue heron. This is what they look like before they get their full breeding plume or their full adult plumage. They're white. White face. Green heron. This was at Lima Ranch. This green heron. Uh, I watched as he, <laughs> as he, uh, he got this frog and then he dip it in the water and then he turn it around. He dip it in the water. He fiddled with it for a good minute or two before he decided to get it head down and then swallow it. Huh. And this is a green heron in the nest, and. It's feeding, it just came into the nest to feed the chicks. And, and this is this is what the chicks do. They grab their beak and, and shake them and stuff to try to get the, the adult to feed them. So I have a I have a, a short video of this. They're, they're pretty violent. But I guess the I guess the uh, nestling with the strongest pull finally gets the food. This was uh, taken uh, at a at a guy's house uh, behind Mary Lake, um, where he called me on the phone and thought he had uh, a bittern nesting in his in this tree in the backyard and I I said well bitterns don't nest in trees yeah look at that I mean <laughs> it's amazing they have a the adults has a beak left when they're done yes I assume somebody knows what this is Anybody? Anybody know what this is? It's a juvenile black crowned yeah. night heron. That's correct. A juvenile black crowned night heron. Um, this was at Calusa National Wildlife Refuge, and this is the adult black crowned night heron, also at Calusa. Calusa had, uh, and I'm sure several of you have been to the Calusa National Wildlife Refuge. When you get 
but when you go on the auto tour, there's a the road drives out past the platform, and then there's just a you turn right and you do the loop around the um, auto tour, and right at the bridge there used to be, and I don't know if there still are, but there, there used to be a colony of black crown night herons. So um, when whenever you go to Calusa, when you head out to the to the um, circular road, stop at the bridge and, and look to your left and see if there are still black crown night herons there. There was there's usually you know 20 to 40 of them there. I don't know if they still are. This is a, a yellow crown night heron that I photographed in Costa Rica, but that's also available if you're in the Eastern US. A white ibis, also filmed in Costa Rica, um, but they can be found in the Southeast coast of the United States also. Of course, everybody knows this. These are local here, white-faced ibis. This is at Calusa National Wildlife Refuge, and then back at uh, Costa Rica. These are uh, roseate spoonbills and a wood stork on the right. Um, they can uh, they can both also be found in South Florida and around the Gulf Coast, but these these were both lifers for me, since I've never been. Um, birding in the east at all. Now these, does anybody want to get uh, speculate what these birds are? You swan. Huh? These are, yeah, there's swans. These are trumpeter swans. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways you can tell, and I forgot to turn on my, can you see my, Pointer. Yes. Pointer options. Here we go. Let's try this. No, I don't want that. <laughs> oh, here we go. That's the that's the trumpeter swan call. You can hear that, right? Yeah. Okay. So one of the easiest ways to tell the swans apart, this is a trumpeter swan, and that's their call. So it sounds like a, a toy horn, right? Or a new New Year's Eve horn. And uh These are tundra swans. They have the yellow lures, which the trumpeters don't. Trumpeters never have yellow on their lures. So that's one way you know that it's probably a trumpeter. And their, uh, their beaks are much straighter. Their bills, the culmin is much straighter than the tundra swans. And this is the call of the tundra swans. So Those are the ones like, you hear flying over. These down here, the yellow. Which is helpful if you, because normally, unless you see them on a pond like this, um, you're usually hearing them fly over. And so that's the easiest way to ID them, actually. These are mute swans. They're uh, on the Sacramento River. They're a uh, um, non-native species that we hope don't destroy too much stuff. Canada geese with their offsprings. Trying to get away from my camera here. This is one of the geese I always look for when I'm in a flock of Canada geese. This is a cackling goose. And this was at uh, Lima Ranch. Lima Ranch 
I used to have cackling geese um, hang around with the flocks almost every year, but um, I haven't seen one there in quite a while. But I always look when I'm at Lima Ranch, and so we'll look this coming Saturday when we're there. Last part of the day. Greater white-fronted goose, also known as speckle bellies. I'm coming in for a landing at the Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. This was um, this was a um, juvenile emperor goose that was obviously I put the map up in the corner because that's where they live um, up in Alaska and northern Russia. You see the map up in the corner, and this guy was at. Gerber wastewater treatment plant. And so several of us uh, birders, crazy birders, went to try and find it. Luckily, the people at the wastewater treatment plant were very nice. And we walked in there and we said, hey, there's this really strange goose here. I said, oh, yeah, it's out there. Showed us right where it was. And we went and added it to our list. This uh, on the left, you'll see uh, Ross's geese, and on the right is a uh, snow goose. Normally, when you see these geese together, and you can see that the Ross's geese, their heads are much cleaner, usually even more cleaner than these guys, than the snow goose, because the Ross's goose don't feed as deep as the snow geese do. But you can always ID the uh, Ross's geese because of the carnivals on their on their beaks. Those gray blotches. This is a uh, Ross's goose dark morph or blue morph. Pretty rare. That was at Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. This is a snow goose coming in for a landing. One obvious way that you can tell a snow goose from a Ross's goose is that black grin that the snow goose doesn't have. And this is a blue goose, a uh, dark morph snow goose, much bigger. And you can see the black grin there on the, on the beak. This is a group of um, wood ducks at Anderson River Park. And I selected this photograph. I have tons of really good pictures of wood ducks, but this shows an adult male in breeding plumage and an adult female on the right there in between. And then you see two other male juveniles um, that are in different phases of juvenileality, I guess, or, or non-adult. Hmm. Mallard male, Nas uh, Calusa National Wildlife Refuge. That's the female mallard. Everybody's familiar with these two. These are gadwall um, at Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. The males on the left, the females on the right. You know, I, I really still have a lot of trouble identifying uh, ducks in flight. But that's the best way to identify them is because if you know the wing patterns, um, like for instance, on the male gadwall, this is the only duck that has that pattern on his wing. Um, so if you can get those down, you'd be um, much further along for IDing these guys. It's a northern pigtail pair at Calusa. This was taken. I don't know if most of the people have been to Calusa National Wildlife Refuge. Yeah. It's they have a, um, a a platform right at the beginning, a huge platform and areas around the platform where you can sit actually at at water level and take photographs of the ducks. The ducks are so used to people being there that you can get super close to any ducks that are around the um, platform there. Picture. 
American Widgeon. The males on the uh, two males in the lead, and this the female behind. Kind of odd because usually the other way around. <laughs> if it's uh, during breeding, uh, it's, it's usually the uh, males that are chasing the females. So they must have already paired up. Uh, and this is a pair of Eurasian widgeons, which I, which oddly enough, I I photographed in the uh, Reading Canal mm. here in in downtown Reading. Mm. Uh, you know, right behind, if you know, uh, just uh, west of Athens Avenue, that canal that goes along there. Sometimes there's some really good ducks there. Yeah. Northern shovelers, male and female. Good picture. Say that again. This is a pair of cinnamon teal. These are both. These are all both at uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. This is the blue winged teal drake that I photographed at Calusa. <laughs> and the female blue winged teal. Not showing her blue there, but they have. Uh, she has blue on the light feathers. <clears throat> Green wing teal is the smallest dabbling duck or puddle duck. This is the male. Pretty picture too. Uh, this is the female green wing teal. Those were both at Calusa National Wildlife Refuge. And this is a, a rare bird here coming up. This is, you notice, let me go back here. You notice the male green winged teal has this white vertical stripe on a mm -hmm. side. That's an American green winged teal. This is a Eurasian green winged teal. Mm -hmm. It's missing the stripe and it has these Have you? head uh, stripes mm -hmm. on it. And uh, they're, I think I've only seen them twice. They're pretty rare, but this was at. Uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. Really? And, and if you, at Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge, although I haven't seen it, I don't even know if the new building is open yet, but they always had um, a list of new of birds that were seen on the auto tour and to show people where they were. And that's how I found this bird is it was, uh, you know, when you go there, you stop and look at the list and see what people have seen. And this was on the list. And so I, even hmm. I talked to the people at the headquarters and asked them exactly where it was so I could photograph it. Yeah. And this this is a famous bird here. This is the famous falcated duck that was at Calusa National Wildlife Refuge for several years, I think two or three years, and then skipped a year or something, and then came back one other year, and then we never saw it again. But you can see on the map, basically, it, it breeds in northern northern Russia, and then uh, it migrates down to China and India and and uh, I guess that's Indonesia. So it's you know it's never supposed to be anywhere near here, but luckily for us, we got to see it once at least or several mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. These are uh, lesser scop. A pair of res uh, with a pair of redheads. The lesser scop is in the forefront, and then the female redhead is in the back, and the male redhead is obviously the one with the red head. You've got a lot of species. This is uh, showing the bird's name here. This is a ring necked duck. Now you know why it's called ring neck, not ring build, ring neck duck at uh, Lima Ranch. And this is the female. This is another a lesser scop drake. And one way to, to show the difference between the lesser scop and the greater scop is this. The lesser scop has this bump on the back of the head. And also, to, I don't think it has a, 
I don't think it has a black tip. If it does, it's a small one. And this is the female lesser scop. It has the pointed head too. It itches. Beautiful. Um, but a common golden eye, it's on the Sacramento River. You know, we see tons of these on the Sacramento River here in Redding, over by the rodeo grounds and actually all along uh, the uh, Turtle Bay Sanctuary. This is the male. This is the female. The female uh, normally has a black beak and it could ha can have some yellow or, or on the or orange on the tip. But um, the barrows golden eye. This is the male barrows. You can see the difference. It's got this um, ama shaped uh, marking on the on the head as opposed to the common, which had the kind of oval shape. And it also has these piano keys along uh, the wing. Uh, and the head looks blue as opposed to uh, the common, which sometimes can be mostly green. And the female barrows has a brown head and an orange beak. So, you know, if this is hanging out that there's probably a, a Drake Barrows around somewhere. One of my favorite and the, and the smallest diving duck in, in America is the bufflehead. Um, they fly really fast and, uh, and they, you gotta love their pink, pink feet. Um, in, in good light, they look something like this. They get iridescent. That black turns iridescent in the right light. And uh, they're just pretty fun all over. Female buffle, buffle head with the chicks. This is at Manzanita Lake. They, they um, nest in the trees at Manzanita Lake. Most of these puddle ducks um, nest in cavities, just like um, owls and um, Western Um, bluebirds and wood and, uh, and wood ducks also, yeah. Put it Merganser Drake. This is at from Lima Ranch. I haven't seen one at Lima Ranch recently, but hopefully we will Saturday. And this is the female hooded Merganser. Common Merzanger female with her chicks. This was uh, this was I photographed on the Trinity River. Uh, Tim Kashuba and I went over there for a day, and that's one of the few ducks we found. This is the ruddy duck drake in in breeding plumage. Um, and the only place I've really seen them in breeding plumage is over at Arcata Marsh. Um, but I did see this female ruddy duck was nesting at Mary Lake last year, last, uh, shoot, I think it was last spring. Our last uh, walk uh, of the season last spring. Sitting on eggs, so, so I got fairly close and got a good shot and she didn't even, didn't even worry about it. This is one of my more favorite Vulture picks, <laughs> just because he's, uh, I don't know if he's looking at me because maybe he thinks I'm dead or what, but I moved on. <laughs> this is a black vulture. Um, I did photograph this in Costa Rica, but they're also in the Southern United States. Female Northern Harrier. Shot this at the uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. Actually, I, th I think I took this uh, from the from the, one of the blinds. The Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge has uh, four uh, photograph blind photography blinds. Um, one of them is on the auto tour loop. Uh, one of them is um, 
south of the platform uh, uh, at Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge, there's one at Calusa and there's one at Delavan. And you can reserve those for 25 bucks a day. Mm. For 25 bucks, you get it for two days, actually. Mm. This, is the, this is an immature male Northern Harrier. You know, it, it seems like we don't see that many male Eat Northern there. Harriers. There. Say that again? So this was, uh, I actually photographed this uh, northern, this male northern harrier at Wild Horse Golf Course in Davis. White-tailed kite, used to be called, I think, the black-shouldered kite, I think, if I recall. Um, I don't really see very many of them, hardly ever, around the valley. Um, so I had to go all the way to Costa Rica to photograph this one. It was the flying over the car when we stopped on the side of the road. Sharp-shinned hawk. You'll note the tiny beak and the big eyes. It, does, it looks pretty innocuous, looks pretty friendly. Sharp-shinned hawk compared to the Cooper's hawk. Has a big old beak. It's got this brow going over its eye. It looks like it's looks like it's ready to kill something. This is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk, also uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. You can get a lot of good photos at the wildlife refuges because the birds they're used to the cars driving around, and so they you know unless you really do something weird there. They're pretty, uh, pretty amenable to getting photographs. Does anybody know what this is? This is a good quiz one. I don't know if anybody wants to unmute and they know what this is, but. Is it so Swainson's? Went... Nope, not a Swainson's. Swainson's is coming up though. Um, this uh, bird, I went to Hawk Hill and Golden Gate Raptor Observatory, because they get them coming through every year. And um, by the way, uh, September 25th, September 25th is usually their highest day of number of species coming through. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the Hawk Hill Golden Gate Raptor Observatory. Um, I could put a, uh, link to it in the chat but you can just look up golden gate raptor observatory and um, drive down to uh, marin go to the marin headlands and you will see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hawks and vultures and all kinds of birds flying through um, i highly recommend it anyway that's a broad-tailed hawk a broad-winged hawk sorry and I went there specifically to see this bird and walked up to the people that are doing the count. And I said, hey, have you seen a broadwing yet today? Oh, no, not yet, but they've been coming through. And uh, within 30 minutes, um, broadwing came flying up. This is a Swainson's hawk, which Swainson's hawks have a lot of different looks to them, but this this one I photographed at uh, Madalena Ranch Wildlife Preserve in the Sierra Valley. It was just perched on this post uh, on the road in. So this is a crop filled red tailed hawk. Uh, it wasn't going to move much. He was at the on the auto tour at Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. Ate something. Yeah, he looks like he ate plenty, doesn't he? This is another red tail hawk. This one is at Calusa, and I, and I only I just took a photograph of this one because I love the the colors on its back. I hadn't I I don't think I've ever seen a red tail with those colors. So then I thought maybe he's a juvenile, but I looked and his tail is totally red. So don't know. It's just a pretty red tailed hawk. This is the last red tail hawk of the day. This was uh, this was flying at me when I was in the 
in the uh, blind flying right at me so I, I got I guess one decent shot out of it this you can tell by if you look at the gape on this bird see that orange gape goes all the way underneath its eyes that's a ferruginous hawk it's got those heart-shaped um, markings on its leg and and uh, sometimes on its on its sides uh, they come in a light morph this is a light morph and this is a dark morph ferruginous hawk and you can see the same thing the gape goes under its eye was one of a good identification i think it's the only hawk that the gape goes underneath that eyeball This is a male adult light morph rough legged hawk at, at Fall River. It's one of my favorite of all time photos. I uh, I put this on Christmas cards. But uh, yeah, it was uh, we got it at the Fall River Christmas bird count, actually. This is all also a rough-legged hawk, but this is an immature female. Um, the immatures have a lighter head. And this one's really white, and they have an extensive black belly patch, which this one does. So, I figured this was an immature female. Very pretty bird. Bald eagle, in Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. He's got a feather in his. Beak. I think it was, looks like it was preening on his chest there. This is a famous uh, leucistic bald eagle um, that used to hang out at the Winter Wings Festival in Klamath Falls. And uh, everybody would, somebody would find it, you know, all the birders would go out, somebody would find it, and then everybody would tell them where it is, and the photographers could go get pictures of it. Interesting bird. This is um, osprey nesting on the old Jelly's Ferry Bridge. It's no longer there. I don't know if it's, did they tear down the, I don't know if they tear, tore down the old bridge, but there's a new bridge there and the nest is not there anymore. There's plenty of osprey nests around though. Matter of fact, another one on Jelly's Ferry Road, this one here, these were youngsters uh, testing out their wings. Really pretty. <laughs> One of the nestlings is getting beat up, kind of. Oh, I don't want to see that again. There we go. This is a crested caracara. Uh, I photographed this in Costa Rica, but um, there was one over on the coast that people were seeing. I don't know how many years people saw that. Crested Caracara over there, Chet probably knows, but there were people going over there every, I guess it was every fall or something. Um, and uh, this one I got, they, I got it in Costa Rica, but you can also see them in Texas. One of my favorite little falcons is the Merlin. Um, I always look for those wherever I go. They're just a really cool bird. They eat, pretty much eat other birds. As male American kestrel. So I got this bird on the Sacramento River. It was just taken off. Probably, probably the best uh, kestrel photograph I've got. Prairie falcon. 
This was on Rat Farm Road. Now, there used to be, when you go down Rat Farm Road and Fall River, there was a whole fence line, like, I don't know, had to be a half a mile or a mile long of posts. And then they took all, like 80% of them out and put steel posts in. So now we don't have the raptors sitting on the posts there on Rat Farm Road anymore. So it's kind of depressing, but this is where I uh, photographed this guy. Uh, Peregrine Falcon, this was a uh, Delavan National Wildlife Refuge. I shot this from the blind on Delavan National Wildlife Refuge. And this is a close up of a Peregrine Falcon. Great. That uh, was looking at me while I was looking at him. <laughs> he was he was at the Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge um, hideout. So you can get like I said, you can get some really good photographs, especially raptors there. California quail, male. This is my yard here in Oak Run. This is a female with a with a little one Juvie behind her. Looks like she's. Looks like he or she is uh, trying to stay in the shade. Probably one of those hundred degree weather. Is actually it looks like there's star thistle in the background there. Mm -hmm. This is a mountain quail, which was in my yard in Oak Run. Also, I had him in my yard twice, and luckily got a fairly decent photograph of this one. Ringneck pheasant. Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. You can see them on the on the auto tour usually. And I've seen them also at Calusa on the auto tour. I can't remember if it was last year, year before. Um, we did a Autobahn did a trip of to the uh, sage grouse at Schaffer Leck, Greater Sage Grouse, and we saw, I can't remember how many we saw, but uh, we saw enough of them. This is actually we didn't get this close that I got this photo. This is a digiscope shot from probably, I don't know, we were probably a hundred yards away or maybe between 50 and a hundred yards away. Some people got closer, but we didn't. Wild turkeys in Palisadro. You could, you might, figure out that this bird with the candy corn beak is a gallinule and you'd be correct. This is a purple gallinule uh, that I photographed in Costa Rica with, with their juvenile, it's feeding its young there. Um, but they can be found in Florida and all around the Gulf, but probably in Texas also. You're familiar with this. This is a common gallinule that I photographed at Lehman Ranch, but actually when I photographed it, it was a common moorhen. Now it's a common gallinule, but I don't think I'd get an extra tick for that. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the American coot. I, now I think American coots are a, a gorgeous bird. I mean, get the bright red eye, they got the purple um, forehead and they act crazy and they got the funky feet and everything. Anyway, I got this at the Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. And this is from Manzanita Lake. They, they nest at Manzanita Lake. So every um, summer when we do our um, yearly um, camp out there in June, in June or July, uh, we always see the young coots there. This one's got a some kind of a food in its beak there and its mother probably just gave it to it. Virginia rail, uh, photographed this at Lima Ranch. And at the same time, I photographed a Sora. So that was a, a good twofer to get in one day when I hardly ever see either one of those. Around the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a limpkin. 
which I photographed in Costa Rica, but they're common in Florida. Um, their diet is almost exclusively apple snails, which you can see the see the beak has got as a curved beak and the bill is crossed. And that gives them the ability to open these um, twisted um, these apple snails, they need uh, uh, something like that to open them up. And so these limpkins is pretty much their entire, I'm sure they eat something else, but it's their most almost, uh, most exclusive feeding, easy for me to say. Everybody, I don't know, everybody probably knows what this is, but it's unusual to see it nesting. This is a sandhill crane nesting at Modoc yeah. National Wildlife Refuge. Hmm. They, they nest there all every year. Um, I've never seen one nesting, but this this year I did. Um, Dan By and I went out there and found this guy nesting. This is another uh, uh, bird I photographed in uh, Costa Rica, but they are on the coastal plain of Texas and from South Houston to where they formerly bred, but they don't breed there anymore, westward to San Antonio and southward to the Mexican border. This is a northern jacana. It's a pretty cool looking bird. Snowy plovers. Um, I photographed these at Little River State Beach um, during Godwood days. I can't remember how many years ago that was last time I was there, but um, male and female hanging out on the beach. Luckily, they weren't being molested by any dogs or people or anything. They were behind the ropes there. I, hopefully that's working because they're near threatened here in California. Hill deer at, at Lima Ranch, they nest there. This is, a, this is what we usually call a, a kill fawn because it's a, a, not an adult yet. Okay. Black oyster catcher, uh, I, I photographed this at Sutras Baths in San Francisco. American Avocet, uh, and I believe this is a male because it, it doesn't have a really curved beak. The female has a much more curved beak. Um, and this was at the Madonna Ranch Wildlife Preserve in Sierra Valley. Black neck stilts. I, I photographed this from the blind at Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. These two adults that are in the air um, seem to be trying to get kick their juvenile out of the house because the juvenile kept following around and following around and begging for food. And, and finally, they kind of got into a ruckus and Juvenile finally took off. Greater yellow legs at Battle Creek State Wildlife Area. Note the uh, green at the base of the bill and the long beak as, com as compared to the lesser yellow legs. No green on the bill, shorter beak, smaller. This is a solitary sandpiper that we saw at Clear Lake Wastewater Treatment Plant. This is a one-legged willet. It's actually not one-legged, it's just standing on one leg. That was at, at Modoc National Wildlife Refuge also. This, uh, I shot this photo in Costa Rica, but these are birds that are, um, we see them in California all the time. Uh, the wimbrel are, all, are, are laying down in the back or I guess maybe behind this uh, row here. And uh, the curlew, long-billed curlew is the one in the front. This is a long-billed curlew. This was at Sutros Baths in San Francisco. Marbled godwit at Sutros Baths. These guys are all out in the open and, and easier, easy to photograph down there. Um, this is a black turnstone, also at Kutras, at Sutras Bath. Surfbird, I photographed this at Humboldt, on Humboldt's North 
jetty. Um, these guys are found on the coast from Alaska nearly to the tip of South America, the entire western coast of North and South America. These are Dunlin and breeding plumage from Humboldt County. I'm gonna to have to pick this up with the, with the, this is a pectoral sandpiper on Lone Tree Pine, Lone Tree Pond. These are semi palmated sandpipers. These were in Costa Rica, but you can find them. We, we found them at Clear Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant occasionally. This is the least sandpiper, Clear Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant. Hmm. These peeps are hard for us usually to ID when we're out there because right. we don't get to see them that often. <clears throat> the long billed dowager, this was at Lima Ranch, same, same time I saw the Soras and the and the Virginia rail, they're all in the same muddy area. I mean, this is a short billed dowager over on the California coast. Wilson Snipe was also hanging out there with the uh, long billed dowagers and the Sora and Lima Ranch. Wilson's Phalaropes. An oddity uh, of the bird life. Wilson's, Wilson's phalaropes are one of the other birds that the female is dressier than the male. This, on, on this picture, the one on the right is the female with all the color, and the one behind is the male who's, mm -hmm. who's more plain. Uh, but this was at uh, the later ranch in, in Sierra Valley also. But these, these redneck fowl ropes here uh, were at uh, Clear Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant. I think it was just last year. So check, you know, check your, um, your county uh, rare bird alerts because you can find good stuff like this different places. Uh, this is that Parasic Jaeger again from Clear Lake. Good idea is the tail. And this is because this is a juvenile. Bonaparte skulls, these were at Black Butte Lake and Dan By took us out there. This is, this used to be called a mew gull. Now it's called a short billed gull. I don't think I get any extra ticks for that, but um, this was at, in Mendocino at uh, Little River, Mendocino County. This is the most typical gull that we have here. This is a, a ring-billed gull. We have them here at Kutras Park daily, all the time. Um, they're all over the place. They're very easy to photograph and, and get flight pictures of them and all that stuff. I believe this is a herring gull with a dragonfly. It was at uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. I'm not that good at, at gulls, but People have told me that these are these are obviously ring billed gulls here, and these are obviously Bonaparte gulls in the back, and in the front uh, with the uh, red mark on the beak. Apparently, is I believe a California gull. And if anybody knows different, please let me know. This is a, a western gull, the Cutrus in San Francisco. This is a Hearman's gull in non-breeding plumage at Kutras in San Francisco. There were lots and lots of them there that day I, I filmed this. Morning doves nesting off the bridge at Turtle Bay. These were probably 20 feet from the, the bridge, the Rainbow Bridge or whatever it's called there. This is a headshot of the Eurasian collar dove, which I always hope don't get any more at my house. Mm -hmm. Rock dove at Kutras Park, pigeon. Mangrove cuckoo, obviously I, uh, I photographed this in Costa Rica, but they're also found in Southern Florida. 
So I figured I could put them in there There's in the United States. This was this is one of the favorite birds I got. Mangrove cuckoo. This is another one I shot in, in Costa Rica and then you can find in Southern Texas. It's the Groove Build Annie. Well, like it says right on there. I don't know if you know by looking at these what these are, but these are baby barn owls. Oh, yeah. At Flying M Ranch in Modesto, there's this, the uh, gentleman there who used to be there has over 375 nest boxes. And he, he uh, monitors them all. And this is, uh, I was with him one day when he was going to ban these little owls. And this is an adult barn owl in flight. Pretty bird. It's a great horned owl that was nesting in Palisadro. Um, I don't think the tree is there anymore, or I know the nest is not there anymore, but there's a little, little video of the, the adult. So this is very early in the morning. That's why it looks so black and white, but he's feeding uh, the owlets. And if you've ever watched uh, birds feed their young, they sometimes just eat whatever's in their mouth and then give the next piece to the baby. They really make them beg for those for that food. <laughs> this is a great gray owl that was found at Lima Ranch here in Reading. Unbelievable. But uh, it took us, I think, five days before people refound it from the original. Um, but it was in a place where it was nesting, or where it was resting during the day, and we got some really good photographs of it. Great gray owl, largest owl in North America. Northern spotted owl. I photographed this guy in Mendocino um, at the Arcata Marsh uh, Godwood days. Not a, not the Arcata Marsh, but at Godwood days. He was up in the Mendocino Forest. This is a sawwood owl that uh, I got to uh, release at the Chico Banding Station with the Erica Iacona, our, our sawwood owl guru. But uh, that was one of the most fun nights I ever had. Those things are so cute. Burrowing owls. I think this is the first photograph I ever took of burrowing owls. And they were up at the top of an oak tree, which I thought was very odd. Mm -hmm. um, and I really haven't seen them in the top of trees very often since then either. But um, Wild Horse Golf Course in Davis, they used to be there. I'm not sure if they're there anymore. And this is uh, at the same location, close up of the family in their burrow. This is a western screech owl uh, that was at Eastman Lake uh, at the Fall River Christmas bird count uh, several years ago. So not a, roosting on a no trespassing sign. <laughs> and this is also a western screech owl in my nest box on my property. The, uh, the adult is on the left there with the ears going up and then there are three nestlings, those little uh, gray balls of fluff uh, down yeah. below her. Now this this I thought was a rare blue crowned hummingbird maybe, you know, when I saw it flying around in my backyard and took photographs of it, but it looked a lot like a female Anna's hummingbird. 
which is what it is. The blue on the top of his head is from, is from the woolly blue curls, getting the dusted on his head. This is a male calliope hummingbird, which I've had a few times at my house and they when they migrate through. And a male rufous hummingbird. And this is a hopefully a short video of Anna's rufous Anna calliope hummingbird, but it shows really good has really good views of the calliope hummingbird male. This is the female rufous. And uh, and the upper uh, looked like a male Anna's. The one thing I liked about this video is that when I pulled back from the camera, you, you could see the their wings look like they're in slow motion. Another female Rufus. There's the male Calliope right there on the left with this, with the uh, finger, long finger purple fingers on the side of the neck. They have a shorter bill and they're uh, smaller than the Anna's. The male Rufus on top, and a pair of Annas below. There on the right is the male uh, Calliope. Acorn woodpeckers in the background. I don't know if I can move this along to see the, cal the calliope male at the end here. There he is. Mm -hmm. I look for those every year, but they're pretty rare. A long time in between. Belted kingfisher male at Fall River Mills in the winter. This is a green kingfisher male. Uh, that I photographed in Costa Rica, but you can also find him in Texas and Southern Arizona. He's got a, he's been beating that fish against a, a bar, against that uh, piece of wood for a while and getting ready to eat it. This is a ringed kingfisher male, also from Costa Rica, but you can also find them in Southern tip of Texas. This is a, a male acorn woodpecker taking the fecal sac out of that nest hole is flying out of there. You can see that fecal sac in his beak. That's the female at the hole. Lewis's woodpecker is on Oak Run Road, pretty close to my house. Beautiful bird. Um, a lot of people apparently don't know what this bird is. Um, because some, this is actually a female Williamson sapsucker, and um, it has been mistaken before for a flicker, but it's not. The male looks like this, totally different. 
he's easy to uh, identify. That's also, this, those are both from uh, Lassen Volcanic National Park. Uh, this is a red-breasted sapsucker I photographed in Sierra Valley. I have them, they come to my house and peck on my trees too. This is a red nape sack supper that we uh, recently saw at Alaskan Volcanic National Park that was nesting here. Um, several people got to see it and photograph it. This was a very rare bird uh, for here. This was in Lima Ranch in 2020. This is a yellow bellied sap sucker, um, which is a totally Eastern bird. Um, and it actually came back for a couple of years, I think three different years it was here. Um, and then we didn't see it again and, and they cut down that tree that it was getting its sap from. Don't know why they did that, but. Male downy woodpecker, pretty common bird almost everywhere. And male hairy woodpecker. Now notice, see the beak on this hairy woodpecker? That's a beak. See the beak on the downy woodpecker? It's like half the size. So when you see them out there in the wild, um, another way to tell them apart was, is that Hairy woodpeckers are almost always on large, on the trunk or on large branches. They will not never go out on the smaller branches like, uh, like the uh, downy does. This is a male blackback woodpecker. Uh, it's got the yellow cap on the head. You can barely see it. That was at last in Volcanic National Park. My, one of, this is probably my favorite woodpecker. It's this is a male Nuttall's woodpecker. Um, and I think it's my favorite woodpecker because they nest on my property and because I like their call. They have a really cool call. Uh, male white-headed woodpecker, uh, last in Volcanic National Park. Northern female flicker. Northern male flicker, but this is a little different. You see how different this is? This guy's got a red patch on the back of its neck. So this is an intergrade northern flicker, uh, probably mated at some point with a yellow shafted flicker. I think this is uh, pretty fast. This is These are northern flickers inside the nest box. The quick video. <laughs> and then one guy sticks his tongue out at the end, too. There's your chuckle for the night. This is a pileated, female pileated woodpecker that I finally got to photograph at Lake McCumber after years and years of trying. Olive-sided flycatcher, these are pretty common this time of year. This is a Western wood peewee at Lassen Volcanic National Park. You can see these flycatchers look very similar. Um, so they make it a little tougher to uh, identify. The Pacific Slope flycatcher here is a little easier to ID because it has those almond-shaped eye ring and fairly white uh, wing bars, as opposed to this guy. This is a willow flycatcher. Um, not much of an eye ring. It's got a lower orange, lower mandible and bar and uh, tan wing bars. Black Phoebe with spider. Of course, these, these guys are everywhere. Says Phoebe, those are um, a little harder to find. Larry. Yeah. Uh, we're coming up on um, 8.30, an hour and a half. Do you think that you have enough for, that we could see next month? <laughs> I guess so. What, uh, are you cutting it off just because it's 8.30 or what? 
It's getting um, long. It's getting long in the tooth, huh? Yeah, that would make it an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know how long it was going to take to go through these. Well, do you still have a lot left? I guess that's the question. Or yeah, I still do. I still have over a hundred left. <gasps> oh, it's, it's way too long. But yeah, yeah. See the, I had to show you the male vermilion flycatcher from Maxwell Cemetery. That's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, and that way we can have, uh, you still have songbirds left. We can save those for uh, next month. Sounds okay to me. Yeah, if you if everyone's okay with that. Sounds good. Good idea. I, I, think, I think that's a great idea. Larry, this has been really, really, I, but just a bunch of good photos. I think, I think that'd make a nice thing to see the songbirds next month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yep. Um, wow. That's really amazing, Larry. So, um, yeah, we'll figure that out. And, um, yeah, I kind of, I figured it might be pretty long and I didn't know how long it was going to take to go through <laughs> them. But, um, yeah, there's still 150 or 160 left. So it's, oh, wow. it's, we're, just, we're just about halfway through. So yeah, we can go through all the songbirds and and all that next week or next month. I mean, yeah, sounds good. That's that way we have um, two Larry Bird presentations. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I give? Did I put the? Where, where's the chat? I don't see the chat. Do you have it up? Um. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there's been a few comments from uh, Chet and I believe Dan by about some questions, a few questions that you or comments that you had, Larry, along the way. Oh, because I don't see them on mine. You don't? No, I don't see them. Probably because it was hidden or something. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was depending on Chet for uh, any of miss miss IDs of. Uh, of shorebirds and stuff because he's the expert on that. How did I do, Chet? Is he still there? I don't know. He's muted. Fell asleep. Yeah, good job on the shorebirds. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I I I I researched them a lot to make I didn't want to screw up and call something what it wasn't. And then uh, Dan by commented that the old Jellies Ferry Bridge was completely removed in 2021. Wow. And nest platforms were added nearby the new Jellies yeah, well, Bridge. Yeah, if, you, if uh, anybody that we not wants to say anything, you have to unmute yourself. But, um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, I guess uh, maybe we'll see you guys uh, in a, next month, um, so we don't have to look for another presenter. We're 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 trying to find uh, somebody that can um, be a program chair for us. So if anybody out there knows anybody, yes, we have a program chair and vice president are open positions. <laughs> if you are interested, you can contact any of us. And uh, thank you for being with us. And I guess we will see you next month. There you are, Chet. Larry. Nice to see you. Thank well, you. Thank by you, the way, Larry, my cat even liked the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I guess she could see, you know, because she kept staring at it like she kept looking at the birds. <laughs> I was waiting for her to like swat at the hummingbirds, but she didn't. <laughs> but, All right. Larry. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Larry. All right. Thank you, Thank you guys. Good night. Uh, Thank you. Good, Good right. job, Larry. Thank you. Forward to Thanks. next month. Hey, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys take care.